thank you for such a, um, a warm response. Um, you know, we, we make these, uh, these documentaries on the perimeter uh, where the barbarians uh, at the edge of um, the great power centers. And so it's, uh, it's an extraordinary experience after um, five, six years of working on this to be here. And for me, the, I've just had this very thrilling experience um, because there wasn't a seat left uh, in the theater. Um, I recognized uh, someone we all would recognize, of course. This gentleman came in and he couldn't find a seat. It was Ralph Nader. <laughs> and so um, for me, it, it was a great thrill actually to uh, watch part of the film with him. And he then scribbled down his address, which I seem to have lost, and also his sister's address, who's an anthropology professor at the uh, University of California, and he wants me to send uh, DVDs to both of them. So if I think Charlie Cray may be in the audience. He can help me uh, figure out how to get Ralph Nader's address. So uh, here I am. So um, questions? Um, just a comment to start. I think what's really important um, about the movie, especially for this crowd, is that it um, articulates all the things that we would like to be able to say, and it puts people out there who are able to say it much better than we can. But I think all of us, and you can tell from the audience response, I think all of us sort of have the notion of this. So I think the mission of the movie is to take that message to a larger audience because um, the, the message is on point, but enables people who can't uh, package it themselves to get the thoughts together so that they can realize where we now stand. Yeah, very much so. And the film, uh, you know, the film was, was made in that spirit. And in fact, uh, in light of your comments, uh, we were um, amazed and delighted and grateful uh, a few weeks ago uh, there was a review of the film in Variety, which is, you know, kind of a very important uh, industry uh, journal. And in the very first paragraph of the review, the reviewer said that um, tea, tea partiers would be hard put to reject the message of this film. So, um, and, and that is an interesting challenge. I, I think that's what you're implying, that... Um, that um, uh, you know, an effort, and, and certainly we're we're very mindful of it, and this will be part of our mission in the coming year uh, to see uh, that the the film is a part of a conversation that engages um, um, at what in, in Quebec we call Monsieur et Madame Tout le Monde, uh, you know, Mister and Matt, Mister and Ms. Every every man and every woman. I really hate to ask this question, but I'm really curious if, if you think it's too late. And after seeing that movie, if you don't think it's too late, why? Well, I, I, you know, I think that um, in, in all humility, um, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's, um, you know, there's that expression of the, that there was this famous mid 20th century Italian philosopher who talked about um, pessimism of the intellect and optimism of the flesh. Well, I think that really characterizes, um, you know, uh, certainly uh, my mindset and probably it's, it's a statement about human nature itself. And I think when Jane Goodall says, um, what, what does she say near the end? She says this thing about you know, we're a species um, that um, is good when our backs are to the wall. So um, I, I don't think, and, and once again, in, you know, looking at these issues from the perspective of us as, as a, a rather peculiar species, um, the jury is out, I, I would say. I mean, I don't know whether any of us has the, you know, could even pr pretend to have um, the, the, the mental capacity to sit in judgment over whether, um, you know, um, we can discover 
what constitutes sustainability for an advanced civilization. I mean, the great anti-capitalist experiments of the 20th century, uh, whether in the Soviet Union or in China, uh, have nothing to teach us about what a sustainable civil advanced civilization would be. And I know when, before I got into documentary film, what I thought I was going to do as a young person was be an economist. Uh, but I, 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 I discovered that the, the, you know, as a young guy in university, that um, the kind of economics that uh, that um, that have led to the kind of market fundamentalism, the the the, I, the basic economic model that um, that basically began to separate economics from uh, moral philosophy, a, a process that began accelerating after the Second World War. As mathematics, as the attempt was being made by mathematics, and we can talk about, you know, the particular econo economists who were who are spearheading this um, th to translate economic, th the attempt to turn economics into another uh, physical science. Um, and um, with you know incredible amounts of quantification, mathematics, et cetera, et cetera. And we've seen, you know, in the recent crash, uh, one of the, the results of an attempt to separate uh, the discipline of economics from moral and ethical consideration. And what makes me optimi optimistic is that unlike, and that was why I, I basically dropped out of economics, because you, you really understood that the practice of political economy was a kind of non-starter in terms of having um, a, a serious or impactful career. I think the situation is very different now. I mean, the very, the very, you know, the word sustainability with a question mark is now, you know, at the at the center of uh, of, um, of of intellectual and political and social questioning, and so I. Uh, fully expect that going forward, young generations are going to be applying themselves to um, s s trying to figure out how to solve that, that uh, yet unaddressed question of what constitutes sustainability in, ev in every imaginable discipline. Hi, uh, wonderful film. I noticed you didn't make any sort of grand recommendations at the end, but uh, this being Washington, I guess my question for you then is, if you had three policy recommendations for the president to take or uh, the Republican candidates, what would they be? And the second piece of that, I guess, is somewhat of a trickier uh, part. Is there a bit of a sort of a, a prisoner's dilemma in this, in which if the US or other developed countries were to say, we will accept slower growth, uh, slower population growth, slower economic growth uh, in a trade-off for quality of life, but in which uh, emerging economies keep moving ahead. Is there, is there a sense in then, uh, you know, countries not being able to keep up? And then when you talk about jobs, how, how, how is, you know, the answer to that going to be, you know, some, it's part of the flip side of the same yeah. coin I see. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, well, I think um, that I'm not trying to evade the question because if we had a few hours, I would I, I would get into it with you. But I think that w w I, the, one of the central ambitions of the film was to make uh, uh, audiences feel that those questions were were absolutely fundamental, and that each one of you, coming from the myriad of walks of life that you come from would understand um, how, or, or would be mindful of how those questions could be addressed from your particular walk of life. I mean, on the other hand, I mean, I think, you know, there are some very, very large scale things that, you know, always come to mind, you know, the, the, role, the role of money in politics seems to be um, really uh, 
extremely problematic and driving the the American political system to you know into kind of a form of madness. Um, and um, but we could go on and on. And I don't. I, I, I'm mindful of being here in in Washington. I I don't really feel it's my role to start making a laundry list. Um, but w what the film does try to do, which I think is rather rare in documentaries, you have your eco-catastrophe films, you have your uh, Wall Street greed films or whatever. W what we have tried to do uh, with the help of people like Michael Hudson and a bit, uh, David Suzuki and Simon Johnson, the former um, what was he, the re research director of the IMF. We've tried to, uh, to, to illuminate the underlying, uh, the hidden mechanisms uh, the, between e economics and ecology uh, to make people more mindful of how, you know, how they're connected. And so, um, well, I, I've, I've just blathered on a lot, and I know I didn't give you the list you wanted, but I, I hope you maybe can understand why I, I think it would remove from your experience right now, the audience's experience, if I got on that, uh, you know, a soapbox. Uh, so thank you for the film. Uh, it summed up a lot of things. Um, uh, one thing that I noticed uh, was that it was quite a while into the film until we heard from a woman and uh, quite a while till we heard from a woman of color. And I think that that seems to be what a lot of this is about. It, yes, it's about economics and ecology, and yes, ecology is the foundation of all life. And if we destroy our ecology, we will have no more economic system and no more life. Um, but really, we could also look at it as it's about, um, what kind of world are we going to live in? Are we going to live in the world that we've built up that's been about systems of domination? Or are we going to look into systems of partnership? And a lot of that has to do with um, equity. It was interesting that someone proposed... Um, well, that was actually Marina Silva. Right. Who, yes. And so it was interesting that someone talked about, you know, people talked about, well, maybe colonization is the is the answer. We need to colonize more planets. And I thought, well, that seems to be the problem. So I, Well, I, that was actually set up in order to, um, to, to, to eliminate it. It was kind of a, a straw dog, you know, um, the fact that that is going to be the solution. We, we, uh, that we, we set that up in order to make our argument that um, the, the, the understanding of sustainability is going to have to be found here on Mother Earth. Do a sequel, create a sequel that kind of is based on um, Cradle to cra Cradle. Cradle to Cradle? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll try to find it uh, for the train ride home. <laughs> oh, really? Great. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, uh, that will be the book I'll look for for the Amtrak home. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much.